Oh, marvellous, what a joke. Oh, you've just caught me. <laughs> I'm just writing out my Christmas cracker jokes for this year. And here's one I think you're going to find rather humorous. What do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tinsalitis! <laughs> anyway, day five and today's node is... Ambient Occlusion Node! Hmm, thank you, Santa. Yeah, so here we are in day five, uh, how they're flying by. So um, let's have a look at this ambient occlusion node. Um, here you can see, I've dragged one into the substance graph already, but if you need to find one, they're down here in effects and ambient occlusion. So obviously you can bake out the ambient occlusion when you are creating your high poly, low poly meshes and you can import those into Substance Designer or even bake them in Substance Designer. But for example if you wanted to create a quick ambient occlusion map from a height map or if you're doing a tiling texture and you not actually baked anything out but completely constructed it within Substance Designer, you can use this node to create your base ambient occlusion. So I've dragged, as I said, I've dragged one of these into here, so I've also just grabbed this brick lumpy, which it can be found under the PBR materials and under bricks if you've got that installed. Um, so all I need is just the height for this one, so if I just double click on here you can see that it's just the texture of a tiling lumpy brick wall, as it says on the tin. So let's grab the height noodle and plug that into the height there. I'm going to double click on here and as you can see it's taking the height information and it's creating an ambient occlusion map so I'll just drag this up a little bit so we can see a little bit more so if I look at the parameters on this one we can see we've got spreading so we can actually bring in more of those darker tones and kind of spread further into the bricks using the um, tones of the height map but we've also got an equalizer so we can bring up some of the more lower frequencies if you really want to have a really dark dense um, ambient occlusion. There's the middle frequencies so you can just see a slight change there on the mid frequencies and the high ones which would be more of the whites but not much of a change going on there. There's also another fine tuning down here so we've got the low again we can fine tune that a little more if you want to add the frequencies in there then you can fine tune it down here with the levels so it's kind of like a levels command we've also got the mids again and and the highs also so we've, it's a really useful node if you just want to get a quick ambient occlusion into the scene so that when you are doing any texturing you can see what it would look like because obviously within a PBR um, setup you don't want any ambient occlusion or any lighting information within the albedo texture so you could keep this separate on the ambient occlusion. Just quickly I've got, I've got this setup here so we've got a diffuse um, specular and we've got the normal but if you do want to add in uh, an ambient occlusion output if you just click into the graph press the space bar and go for output you can create another output so if I double click this you can see here we can go to add item so I go right I want an ambient occlusion so I press that little plus there change it to ambient occlusion give the identifier um, a name so we call it AO ambient occlusion and you can do the same again AO in there and to make sure that it actually is grouped together with all these outputs on this graph because if I click one of these you can see it's got material so I'll just copy that and then if you put in material there you then you've set up another output that you could actually plug this into into here and then if you right click and view outputs in 3D view you can see it's starting to use that ambient occlusion node so that's how you would actually get uh, an extra output into there uh, if you are going to use this ambient occlusion but also there are other different um, um, things you could use this for, different output you could have opacity, emissive, ambient, ambient occlusion and it, and it continues and masking is quite good if you want to uh, create some sort of mask out of there and input it into a different graph or another node um, yeah so that's really useful and a little bit of a bonus uh, bonus node there on day five oh ho one more for the road what is Santa's favorite pizza one that's deep and crisp and even <laughs> see you all in day six <laughs> merry christmas